This video is proudly recorded and produced on OpenBSD. When it comes to the virtualization on OpenBSD, our options are limited to either QEMU, which is a software virtualization. It emulates the CPU and the instruction set, and it is kind of slow despite the fact that it is very powerful and flexible. The another option is VMM Virtual Machine Monitor and this tool is native to the OpenBSD. It also uses the virtualization technology and it is much faster than QEMU but at the same time it has a couple of shortcomings. One of the shortcomings is the lack of graphics. There is no graphic and another one is the hardware pass-through. And another disadvantage, in my opinion, is the difficulty to use it, at least for the first few time. The only option that you have to connect to a virtual machine, at least when you are installing it, is the serial console that I'm going to show you. But after you have done with the installation part, you can actually connect uh, via SSH or VNC but those are uh, slow for example you cannot do gaming on it doesn't make sense it's too uh, slow when it comes to the vmm documentation i highly recommend you to uh, start by reading faq 16 virtualization and afterwards you can actually move to the vmctl man page and vmm man page vmctl is the command and control of the vmm and that's a tool that we are going to use to uh, actually control the virtual machines enough of the theory let's uh, start with some practice and get our hands dirty for this video i'm just going to demonstrate the basics to you and we are going to install a virtual machine together and i'm reserving the more advanced topic for the upcoming videos there are a couple of prerequisites that you have to take before just creating a virtual machine. The first thing is to ensure that the hardware virtualization on your system is enabled. So for that one, you have to go to the BIOS and enable the virtualization option. And afterwards, once you boot it to your OpenBSD, you have to do do as FW update to ensure the VMM module is installed. So this is the VMM module, or you can call it the firmware. So it's installed. And then you have to actually enable the uh, VMD or virtual machine daemon. Enable VMD. And we want to uh, start the VMD right away. Uh, start VMD. And these steps are just like a cautionary steps. Probably in your computer, it's already up and running. Now, the next step is to get the networking uh, working because we want the virtual machine to connect to the internet like any modern operating system. For that one, there is a guideline here under FAQ 16 called networking, but in my opinion, it's a bit over engineered because it gives too many options to choose and that is very difficult. But uh, so far I experimented and the best option is option two using NAT for virtual machines. So it is going to create two interfaces, one on your host machine and that one would be a virtual uh, network interface and then it's going to create another net, uh, virtual network interface on your guest machine, similar to any normal uh, virtual machines. So to get this option to up and running, we have to actually do a bit of configuration. The first step is to enable IP forwarding. To enable IP forwarding, we have to actually pass this parameter to the CCTL. So we can do do as cctl this one equals to one and this enables the IP forwarding right away to make it permanent of course we are going to write it to the cctl conf file and this one I have already here added. Afterwards we have to do some modification to the firewall for that 
just copy this block of text go to the uh, slash etcpf and then add the text here i have already added the text here so i don't need to do anything afterwards we have to reload the pf again so pfctl slash etc pf.com so it's going to read the file again and now the firewall rule has changed so these are the basic configuration you do and they are one of configuration you don't need to do it again and again now let's create a virtual uh, hard drive here so for that one we just do do as vmctl create dash s 40g so this one is the hard drive capacity and then the name of the hard drive or the image so i'm just going to name it deb 11 because we are going to install debian 11 and now if i do ls you can see it's created and also it uh, it will be incrementally increased so it's the size of it is dynamic not a static the next step is to uh, start the virtual machine so for that one we do do as vmctl start dash c capital not capital c of course and this means to connect to the console right away to the serial console and then m uh, amount of the memory that we want to dedicate 4 gigabyte l enable the networking i the id of the virtual machine i'm going to explain about this one later on it's a very useful thing that if you pass so i'm just going to pass one and then r is the medium that we are going to install from so in this case would be debian iso and then d is going to be the disk and debian 11 and lastly we are going to pass the name of the virtual machine so debian underscore 11. now it's going to start the installation process and we will see something like this so you may actually be tempted to press enter but this is the wrong thing to do because as i said there is no uh, graphic uh, for the vmm so we have to actually enable the serial uh, console to enable in the console instead of pressing enter we have to actually press tab here and after quiet we have to write console equal to tty's 0 comma 9600n8 uh, 9600 is the speed of the console of course and you can change it to whatever that the linux distribution is supporting and now i press enter but we still get an error undefined uh, video mode number 340 instead of pressing enter we actually going to press a space and then it will start the console mode automatically despite seeing the error and as you can see now we are actually in the installation and we can proceed with the installation process so as you can see it's more or less looks like the retro computers it's very i would say interesting and i'm going actually to continue the installation and afterwards i continue further one thing that i want to mention while the debian is installing is that if i do if config here i will see an additional network interface called tab zero and this one is the uh, virtual network interface of the host that i was talking about a few minutes ago and let's look at the ip address here is it starts with 16412 so everything except this one is fixed so this number won't be changed the only thing will be changed is one and this one is coming from the id of the virtual machine that is specified when we created the virtual machine so here if we were passing two three or something this number would be set for the guest the ip 
would be the same except two would be three. One thing to note when you are installing any Linux distribution is to enable the SSH server so you will have easier time in the upcoming boots and you don't need to use a serial console anymore. The installation process is finished. I pressed enter. Now the machine will restart itself and I don't need to do anything. It will connect to the serial uh, console again automatically. So this is the first boot and automatically connected to the serial uh, console. And I'm going to log in here. So if I do uname slash a, you can see it's Linux, but I'm still connected to the serial console and that is slow. So let me grab the IP address of the network interface. As I mentioned, uh, the one is coming from the ID of the virtual machine that we gave and three means it's a guest machine. So since uh, my SSH server is already enabled on the virtual machine, I can SSH to this easily. Now I get this error and this one you may get it uh, multiple times, but don't worry about it. All you have to do is to update your keygen, SSH keygen. Then I'm going to pass the IP address here and it's updated. And if I try again, it will connect to the virtual machine. So let me pass the password and now I actually SSH to the virtual machine. So if I do uname slash a, you can see it's Debian. So let's actually install something. apt install neofetch. So as you can see also, it's pulling the packages from the internet. That's a proof that the networking is also working here. And now if I do NeoFetch, you can see Debian is running inside of the OpenBSD virtual machine. If you want to exit from the console, we can just press tilde and then control D afterwards. Then it will actually exit from the console, as you can see. Let's get the status of the virtual machine. So we do vmctls status here. And as you can see, the owner is root and the virtual machine is running. We will talk about the ownership in the upcoming videos. But now in case that you want to connect to the uh, virtual machine again, you can just do do as vmctl console then you have to either pass the ID of the machine or the name. So I'm going to pass the ID and then I connect it to the virtual console again and I can actually exit from it. Now, if I want to shut down the machine, I would do power off here. So this will shut down like a normal shutdown on any Debian distribution or any Linux distribution to be more accurate. And if I do do as, vmctl status if i do it multiple times and as you can see the machine is already shut down after a couple of seconds in case that the machine crashes and uh, it doesn't shut down properly you can also do do as vmctl stop and then pass the id or the S or the name of the virtual machine that will kind of shut it down from the vm uh, vmm site now, if we want to start the virtual machine again, we can do do as vmctl start. We can pass dash c, depends on you, whether you want to connect to the console or no, I don't want. Then I pass the memory size again, four gigabytes. Then I want the networking, pass the ID. I can change the ID as well if I want, but I don't want to do that then pass the disk dev11 and then the name of the machine we can change the name of the machine as well so if i do do as vmctl status you can see the machine is running and i can now connect uh, via ssh without 
even connecting to the console it's going to take a while until the machine boots up and now i successfully connected to the debian virtual machine inside of the openbsd vmm that's all for this video i hope you enjoyed it I would like to take a moment to thank Patreon contributors Georg with 30 generous dollars, OpenBSC maximalist John Lopsa, OpenBSC enthusiast John Collins, and Liquid Mobius. Thank you guys for your contribution and donations.